My name is Mary Ellen. I don't know how old I am. I have never had but one pair of shoes, but can't recollect when that was. I have had no shoes or stockings on this winter. I have never had on a particle of flannel. My bed at night is only a piece of carpet stretched on the floor underneath a window, and I sleep in my little undergarment with a quilt over me. I am never allowed to play with any children or have any company, whatever. Mama has been in the habit of whipping and beating me almost every day. She used to whip me with a twisted whip or rawhide. The whip always left black and blue marks on my body. I have now on my head two black and blue marks which were made by Mama with the whip and a cut on the left side of my forehead which was made by a pair of scissors in Mama's hand. She struck me with the scissors and cut me. I have no recollection of ever having been kissed and have never been kissed by Mama. I have never been taken on my Mama's lap or caressed or petted. I never dare to speak to anybody because if I did, I would get whipped. Whenever Mama went out, I was locked up in the bedroom. I have no recollection of ever being in the street in my life. Now, Mary Ellen Wilson's story is fascinating because she became really one of the first children to be rescued successfully from an abusive home. The book really begins by following both Mary Ellen's story and then the story of the SPCA and how Henry Berg ended up founding the SPCA. So these two stories eventually come together. What happens is uh, a Methodist social worker you could call her a social worker because really at the time that's what she was. She volunteered for St. St. Luke's Mission in New York and she would go out to the tenement buildings in some of the worst parts of the city like Hell's Kitchen and she would help people. She'd bring them bread and, and, and help them clean or do whatever she could do to, for the poor out there. Um, and when she was in one of the buildings on 41st Street, she heard stories about a little child. Now people didn't believe there could be a little child in this tenement room because they never saw her. Maybe once or twice they saw her out in the courtyard going to the water closet, which was the bathroom at the time. Um, but they, they reported that this little child would be beaten severely every day, and they would hear her screaming, oh, mama, no, mama. You know, they would hear this every day. So finally they, they told Etta Wheeler about it and said, is there anything you can do to help this child? Well, Etta, Etta did everything she could and, and eventually ran out of options. And her niece suggested to her one day, she goes, you know, Mr. Berg does such kind things for animals with his uh, Society for the Prevention of Cruelty to Animals. Perhaps you could approach her because you're so upset about this little girl and she surely is a little animal. So, as a last resort, Etta Wheeler did go to Henry Berg. And that's really where this story begins. And it goes into a trial that was really unlike anything that anybody had ever seen. The New York Times, the Herald, the Tribune, Newspapers all over the world covered this trial because uh, they all got the, the, uh, you know, the idea, the romanticized idea that Henry Berg rescued this little girl under the premise that she was a little animal. Now a lot of this was due to a man named Jacob Reese who was um, a social reformist and a photographer and a Tribune reporter and he would go out and, and take photographs of all the horrible things happening in the tenements and um, do everything he really could to get the word out that he actually wrote a book called How the Other Half Lives telling people that there's a there's a really downtrodden part of society here and they need help but he became intrigued with the Mary Ellen Wilson case so um, he was in large part romanticized the whole theory that that she was rescued under the premise that she was an animal. I was in a courtroom full of men with pale stern looks I saw a child brought in, carried in a horse blanket, at the sight of which men wept aloud. I saw it laid at the feet of the judge who turned his face away, and in the stillness of that courtroom, I heard a voice raised, claiming for that child the protection men had denied it, in the name of the cur on the street. And I heard the story of Mary Ellen told again, that stirred the soul of a city, and roused the consciousness of a world that had forgotten. And as I looked, I knew I was where the first chapter of children's rights was written, under warrant of that made for the dog. So, anyway, the Mary Ellen Wilson story is a fascinating one. 
This book is available. It's called Out of the Darkness, The Story of Mary Ellen Wilson by Eric A. Shellman and Dr. Stephen Lazaritz. And you can find this on Amazon.com, on Borders, or any one of those sites. Um, you can order it through your local bookstore. It's available all the time. Um, and the second book, now, you'd really have to be into it if you read this book. Now, this book is written in a dramatic format. So when you read this book, you will be taken back to the 1800s. You will smell the smells. You'll see the sights. You'll, you'll get a feel for how people lived then because, really, it's, it was just amazing. I mean, Ulysses S. Grant was the president when she was rescued. Um, Custer's last stand against the Indians was two years later. So you can imagine this was a long time ago and you kind of don't really get a feel for the world the way it was then until I tell you those little tidbits. There was no electricity. Lamp lighters would go up and down the street and light the lamps. Um, there were no telephones. I mean it's just it's just quite amazing when you think about the time and when this child was rescued and what took place. Now if you read this one and you're into it and you really want to get the in-depth information on, uh, you know, read the actual court transcripts, read all the newspaper articles about the case, then you would be interested in buying <laughs> the Mary Ellen Wilson Child Abuse Case and the Beginning of Children's Rights in 19th Century America. It's a mouthful. I didn't name it. The publisher actually titled the book. But this is a collection of all the research materials, so I think you'll find this one fascinating. Now keep in mind, the court transcripts are available nowhere but here. This is the only place you'll ever find them because the New York Society for the Prevention of Cruelty to Children, which was founded in 1875 as a direct result of this case, is still in New York today, still up and running. And they have the court transcripts, but they would not release them to me unless I had signed authorization from one of Mary Ellen's descendants, which we got through Mary Ellen's granddaughter. So that was Shirley Mellenbacher. So anyway, the whole thing was a fascinating experience. Um, I think you'll find the book a great read, and I wanted to get something out there. It's been so long, and I really think it's time uh, to get the information out there about Mary Ellen again, because it's, um, it was a great experience, and Stephen and I were so passionate about it, which was why we wrote this book kind of like a novel. It's true. If anybody asked you about the Mary Ellen case and you read this book, everything you would tell them would be true. Um, some of it had to be filled in, conversation, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, but... Um, I've only gotten great reviews. If you go to Amazon.com and read the um, reader reviews, you will see that uh, it's been four to five stars for every review. I've never heard anybody say anything bad about the book. Everybody who reads it, reads it in a short time, two, three days maximum, and they love it. And it's not short. It's a 344-page book. So anyway, I thank you for watching this. I hope you enjoy the book if you end up getting it. And if you do, please go to Amazon.com and write a review or leave me some information here on this YouTube site. I'd appreciate it. Thanks a lot. Have a great day. This is Mary Ellen, a photograph taken a year after her rescue. She looks a lot better than she did when she came out of that tenement building. And this is a photograph of one of the tenement buildings of uh, 19th century New York. And this is Henry Berg, who founded the SPCA back in 1866 and rescued Mary Ellen in 1874. And here's Etta Angel Wheeler. She's the woman who approached Henry Berg about rescuing and saving the little girl. A couple of songs were written about her. It was so romanticized at the time, and these are them. Jacob Reese, he's the guy, the uh, romantic social reformist who kind of overblew the animal rescue aspect. And this is Mary Ellen in 1955, a year before she died. Now, she passed away at 91 years old, and uh, her gravestone had to be recarved because the family had the wrong b birth date for Mary Ellen. Our research discovered it. Her daughters, Etta, named after Etta Wheeler, and her second daughter, Florence, both lived to the age of 91. So that's some longevity. So thanks for watching. The first book is Out of the Darkness, The Story of Mary Ellen Wilson by Eric A. Shellman and Stephen Lazarus, M.D. A lot of these photographs are there. And this is the Mary Ellen Wilson Child Abuse Case and the Beginning of Children's Rights in 19th Century America. So both of these books have a lot of these photos in them. And I appreciate you uh, watching this and listening. So thanks very much.